we've looked at the disk profile. So we said we've got those customers and team members that are more dominant, those are, that are more influential, those that are more steadiness, and those that are more um, compliant-like in nature. Well, now what we do to make it easier, and it's more about my team members on the floor and how they look at a customer and what they think about afterwards and how they process it, but we now look at more animal-like profiles. So if you were to think of a customer being more lion-like in nature, Right, thinking about lions in the wild, what are some words that would automatically come to come to your mind? Hungry. <laughs> okay, not the first word I was thinking of, but okay, they're aggressive, they're dominant. What else? What else would a lion be? Are they fast or slow? They're fast. They're scary. And right, now, for a lot of people, if you're not lion-like, absolutely, a lion can be scary particularly as a customer because they want what they want, they know what they want, and they don't tolerate ineffectiveness, all right? So they anticipate that you will know exactly what it is that you're talking about. Here's the thing about the lion though, when we look at someone who's a little bit more lion-like in nature, a lion wants efficiency, but they want it now. They want a product now. So even though they may have researched something a little bit more, and they probably will because they're very black and white in nature. So sometimes they know something's about to hit the market, they know something's happening, but when they go out to actually physically buy it, they want it now. Now because of that, they are less likely to buy online because that would be waiting. Now, not only would it mean waiting, but if the product's not right, that would involve having to send it back and lines just won't do that. So they are more likely to buy from bricks and mortar. Now, you'll know a lion when they walk into your store because they do what we call hard target search. So they walk with pace, they look like they're on a mission, and there's a completely different engaging line that we utilise with a lion than we utilise with anyone else. We call that the direct offer. Right? So a lion walks into your store, and generally you'll notice them and you will frog march up to them quite quickly and go, you look like someone who knows exactly what they're after. So what can I quickly help you with today? Now the word quickly is important because they want short, fast, sweet presentation. They are scowling your shelves to see what you've got. All right, and they're gonna ask about something quite quickly. Now here's the other thing about them. They will always challenge you on best price, always because they want to make sure they're getting the best deal, but because urgency plays a part in a lion purchase, a smart salesperson goes, that is my best price. Would you like to take it today? Now, they're not going to faff around shopping you out with five other stores. They get it, they get it now, and they'll just make an instant decision. So they are likely to buy the latest and greatest, they'll buy what's new, they'll buy what's on point. Right? And the interesting thing is they are roughly 10% of the population. So they're only a smidgen of the population, but for us they are by far the easiest to close. Because lions were normally predetermined, they were pre-sold before they walked into your store as long as you've got something remotely close to what it is that they're after. Um, is there like any different characters there? Are they male? Like I would say a lion would be a male. Are you calling me a male? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, no, not at all. Not at all. There's no, there's no mixture with that. Um, again, you all tend to find that in business. Uh, a lot of CEOs, managing directors, will have a lion-like uh, profile to them. Um, thinking of lions, so, and this is the other thing to think about when you're profiling your customers, is that some people have a bit of a mix. So some people might be a lion mixed with a puppy, or a puppy mixed with an owl, so to speak. All right, but I'm gonna come back to that in a moment, it's a good question. Yeah. All right, so lions are roughly 10% of the population, then you've got someone who's a little bit more puppy-like in nature. Now, what are some words that would naturally describe a puppy? What do you reckon? Yeah. Cute, lovable, approachable, what else? Playful. Playful. Clumsy. Loyal is a massive word. What was that, Stephen? Clumsy. Clumsy. Okay. <laughs> now, they are playful. Now, potential time wasters, yes. Uh, puppy loves a good yak, all right? They love a good talk. Um, the other thing about a puppy, this is a big thing about a puppy, is a puppy is an impulse buyer. 
over and above anything else. And so here's what happens. A puppy goes grocery shopping and they're heading to, well, they weren't heading to Coles today because they were closed, all right? But they're heading to Woolworths, they're heading to Woolies and they just happen to walk past your store and something sparkly catches their eye and they go, ooh. And a puppy wanders on in and then they get a sensational salesperson and you pay them some genuine attention Right, you actually have a nice personal conversation with them. You show them something that is, an, and, and puppies are buying whatever is on trend. Sparkly, colourful, right? P puppies love pretty. Right, you show them something that's on trend, and then you naturally go, So, would you like to go ahead with that today? Now, a puppy had no intention of buying jewellery today, but they're now stuck in a rock and a hard place and they really love it. And they do this, they go, what the heck, I'll learn more next week. All right? And puppies will naturally make an impulse decision. Now here's the thing with puppies, you've got to be real fast in getting that baby in a packet, wrapped up, all right? and keep them engaged with conversation right to the moment till they leave your store. Because they also have a tendency to get what we call the guilt moment. All right? Where they're standing in your store going, oh, should I, should I not, should I, should I not. So it is about keeping them engaged. Now, they are fast, they are talkative, but they're very emotional and people-oriented. So the language they use is very much he, she, like, love, and it's very personal. And puppies will do what we call hang out. So a smart salesperson, a puppy's gonna give you information you so don't need. Right, you are five minutes into the conversation, you have no idea why they came in today, but you know where they're going on holiday in the year 2019, you know how many kids they have, you know what they had for breakfast this morning, All right, you just don't know why they came into your store and that's just how they operate. They have the gift of the gab and they use it. Now they are roughly 15% of the population. Now thinking about this, lions and puppies combined are what refer to as being extroverts, they're outgoing. They're fast. They're faster paced. The difference between the two is that a lion is very matter of fact and a puppy is very emotional and soft. Right? So a lion's a little bit harder edged and the puppy's that nice softer style. Now that means that only 25% of those customers coming into your store really want to interact with you up front. Right? Which means 75% of most customers coming into your store are introverts, meaning they think first, act second. They are harder to get into a conversation with, they do not trust easily, and the last thing they want to do is talk to a salesperson today, even though they're coming in to look for something specific. So it is a completely different engaging line that you might utilise. So thinking about a puppy, right? A puppy, you would generally talk non-business, and we all know non-business opening lines, they've been in jury for forever and a day, right? but they are really only relevant for roughly 15% of the population, right? No one else is interested in nicey nice conversation with you today because they're resistant, they're introverted, and they don't trust easily. So it's a completely different style of interacting that we're trying to do with at least 75% of the population. Now, thinking about that, you then have someone who's a little bit more koala-like in nature. So what are some words that you might associate with a koala? <laughs> What was that one? Olivia. Affectionate. <laughs> you got it all going on in the front today, don't you? <laughs> right. Sorry, aside from being slightly diseased, generally most people would say cuddly. Cuddly. Yeah, cuddly's good. Alright, so they're, they're a little bit cuddly. Alright, are they slower or faster? Slower. They're definitely slower. In fact, they're a little bit more sleepy more than anything else and they are shy. So, when you think about it, and here's the interesting thing about koala styles, they, they think first, process second. They're not buying for the sake of it. They're buying for, some, for longevity, they're buying quality, and they want something that is versatile, that will go mix and match with what they've already got. So in order to understand what that is, we have to take a lot longer in what we call the qualifying process. So I need to take a lot longer building the rapport, building the trust before I actually show anything or showcase anything to a koala style individual. Now, koalas are hugely indecisive. They are the style that does the, 
Oh, I'm just looking. They are also the style that does I want to have a think about it because they do. Now, the reason I want to have a think about it, and, and you think about this, watching your colleagues around you when they show something, how many items would most of us showcase to a customer most times? How many items do you think most of us would pull out and show to a customer? How many, how many do you reckon? Five? What do you reckon? How many items would we pull out and show? Three or four? Same? What do you reckon? How many items would we pull out and show most times to most customers? Four or five? Four or five? Yeah. It could be more. It could be more. <laughs> Alright? Now here's the thing. When you give someone who's more koala-like more choice, they just physically cannot make a decision today. And they will walk. And it's not because you couldn't present the perfect solution, it's just the fact that we didn't. Now, they will weigh up the pros and cons of every single piece of information that you give them. So the more options you give them, the more reason you give them to actually walk out of your store and go, that's great, I'll have to think about it, because they have to. They're weighing up the pros and cons of this piece versus this piece, this size versus this, this price versus this, rose gold versus yellow gold. Right? So, and so ideally what we're trying to do is minimise the selection that we show so that they can actually make a decision today. Now the other thing is this, whenever it comes to someone who's more koala-like in nature, we know they're going to do the one to have a think about it. So we need to know exactly how to overcome that concern. I'm going to come back to that a little bit later on. All right, now, the other thing about uh, koala styles are uh, that they don't like change. In fact, they're completely resistant to it. So a koala, once they are your customer, they're your customer for life, you would have to really muck up in order for them to no longer want to buy from you. So they are loyal, they are consistent, it's just about getting them to be your customer for the first time. Now, the interesting thing about them is they are 65% of the population. Right? Two thirds. Two thirds are hugely indecisive. Two thirds are resistant to salespeople. Two thirds do not trust easily, which means with two thirds of the population, we need to take our time in building rapport and credibility before we start pulling merchandise out of the cabinet. Now, you might go, well, that's a little bit difficult when they've walked up and gone, can I please see that? But a smart salesperson does what we call a slow reveal. And I will always have a salvet, I will always have a glove, I will always have a tray because those three things immediately will trade value. We never ever show with our bare hands. And I will naturally pull it out and it's now hidden in my salvet and I'm polishing it. And then I actually reverse engineer the process and start asking a few questions so that I have a valid reason why I'm about to present this piece. Do not be in a hurry to show your merchandise. They may have already seen it, but they haven't seen a price as long as you don't have anything, everything ticketed. Right? And they really haven't seen the quality of it or what it looks like on. So keep it to yourself just for a moment, just to give you enough time to ask a few quick questions that you can then utilise as part of your presentation process. All right, now, it works an absolute treat. That, now, thinking about coming back, and I just mentioned something else, please try not to have everything ticketed in the store. All right? Some people's perception are, if it's ticketed, if it's not ticketed, we won't look at it. If it is ticketed, I already see the value of it. And here's what people do in your cases, they scan prices. They do this. They scan prices, so they they look at it and they go, oh, 2,000, no, nah, not spending that. Two, oh, like, no, not spending that. So you are better off to have less ticketed because more people will actually ask to see it. <coughs> All right, and that allows you to build the value. Now, the thing is, if I look at it, I may have come out today to buy something for myself and I'm thinking around that sort of $1,000 mark but I fall in love with a piece. You build the value in it, it may be well over the thousand dollar mark, but you have other options in order for me to A, make it easy on my pocket and be able to take it home today even though I've only got a thousand dollars sitting on my credit card. Does that make sense? And if you have everything priced, it allows you to not be able to do that. You've got plenty of options, 
the key is where you introduce those options and how you do that today. So we highly recommend that your promotional items are ticketed and we generally leave off the prices of most other things. All right, now coming back to koalas and owls. Last style of individual is someone who's a little bit more owl-like in nature. Um, an owl is roughly 10% of the population. Owls are, again, slower paced, all right? Now, what are some words that might jump to your mind when you think about an owl? What do you reckon? What are some words that would describe an owl? Wise. All right, observant, wise, what else? Sharp. Smart, sharp, educated. So owls have done their research before they come into our store. Owls will often come in with a mobile in their hand. All right, they are price matching. They already have, a, they've been, they're either on your website, they're looking at someone else's website. They have already shot multiple stores before they come into yours, All right? If they haven't, they will, because that's how they operate. Owls are looking for the best price they possibly can. Right? And they will shop around for forever to sell and save themselves $100, $50, $20, whatever it is. They don't calculate the time it took to do the shop around. All right, but they're not in a hurry. So that when they're making a buying decision, they're likely to make it over multiple weeks or even months. Now, the thing with an owl is generally you will find they're conservative. There's a misconception uh, that says that lions are the hardest customer to actually serve. They so are not. Lions are the easiest customer to serve. They know what they want. You just gotta be on point with them and very black and white. The hardest customer to serve is actually an owl. <laughs> Because an owl is not personal. They do not want any of the nicey nice personal conversation and they know what they want and they will talk to you when they're good and ready. And they'll actually come across as being ruder than a lion in a heartbeat. All right, so owls are by far the most difficult. They're very procedural in terms of how they do things. So they're driven by process, they're driven by this is the way that we do things. They take notes, they will black and white everything. So if they are shopping for something, they will have an Excel spreadsheeted, right? And then they will have price points, they will know where they got it from, they'll know exactly who they spoke to. And an owl is very defined, but they're also very conservative in the style that they're likely to purchase. So where if somebody's a little bit more puppy-like has a flair and uh, are buying things that will pop completely different, an owl is more likely to go with conservative style more than anything else. Now, why is this important? When you actually take time to get to know your customers, you're actually in a position to pull out something that's a lot more relevant to them instead of showing everything that you've got. And when we do the showing everything that we've got, we call that show and hope. I'll show you this, I'll show you that, and I hope somewhere in there that I show you something that jumps out at you rather than showcasing a piece right from the very beginning that is on point and the perfect piece. Now, customer relationships are absolutely essential. Um, how do we get better at it? One of the biggest things you can do, whether you're a store manager or a business owner, is to constantly be talking to your team members after an interaction going, what style of individual do you think that was? All right, and why? Right now, what do you think you could have done a little bit differently to get into a conversation today? Now, thinking about koalas and owls, they are 75% of the population combined. Three quarters are introverted, three quarters do not want to talk to us to begin with, so you need a different engaging style to get, to get into conversation with them that is not non-business. Right? You need something that's more matter of fact, you need something that is consistent, you can chop and change it from week to week, but that's something different and something we call a quick tour, and we'll touch base on that very soon.